What's up, everyone? Welcome to another UFC Quick Picks here on the Mayo Media Network. My name is Brett Appley. I am here to give you my favorite cash game play, tournament play, salary play, and a matchup I like on this UFC Vegas 88 slate. We have Tai Tuivasa versus Marcin Tybura. 13 fights. Not the most talent-stacked card, I will say, but uh, should be an entertaining card and an entertaining DraftKings slate as well. Uh, before I get into those picks, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and why don't you comment below who your favorite play is that is a little bit unique. Give me someone who you don't think the field is going to be as high on as you. That's what I'm interested in hearing this week. There are a few options, um, and... As usual, that's what can separate you from the field. All right, let's get into my cash game play of the week. It's going to be Isaac Dolgarian at 8.5K. All right, in cash games, I think Isaac Dolgarian is a pretty strong option at 8.5K, mostly because of his style and his odds to win. His odds are trending in his direction. He opened at like minus 118 or, or you know, fairly close to a pick -em. He's now up to minus 194 on Pinnacle, so at 8.5, he's going to stand out as a value in that sense. He also comes from an elite wrestling pedigree, and his style is built on wrestling. He scored 122 points in his UFC debut with a takedown and early domination. I think he's going to be very popular on the slate in tournaments. Unfortunately, although I'm pretty sure I did give him out uh, in his debut as an underdog as well, where he was not as popular. Still, from a cash game perspective especially, he rates out very well. Good style to score points. He's going to land takedowns. Uh, we do have a little bit of cardio concerns, but good value at 8.5K compared to a strong near minus 200 money line. Dolgarian is a good play in all formats, especially cash games. Next up, my tournament play of the week. This one I, I will be for uniqueness purposes. I do not think this fighter is like a standout in terms of the strength in their pricing range or as like a talent or anything like that. But as a somewhat contrarian option, I think Macy Chasson is pretty interesting at 9K, especially because we're going to get a lot of ownership soaked up at the top in Enzo Chukwu, an obvious tournament play there. Gerald Mearshart's going to get a lot of love at 9.1K. And even Moises and Davis will get ownership in that 9K range as well. Chasson, I think, is going to get overlooked at 9K. And I understand why, because she's not a, a particularly good striker. She's a little bit sloppy. She um, isn't that consistent in, in any part of her game. She's facing Pani Kianzad, who she has already submitted once in her career. Granted, it was several years ago. But point being, Chasson will likely need to close the distance, control Kianzad against the cage, clinch take her down, and out-grapple her once again to win. And if she can do that, she's shown a pretty good historic ceiling. She scored 102 points against Kianza last time out. Her other wins in the UFC, 111, 111, 108, 75, and 106. There's no guarantee that she reaches a ceiling like that. She's only plus uh, 240, I believe, to win inside the distance, which is mediocre. But again, that's one of the reasons, plus 285, excuse me, that's one of the reasons why the public won't be as excited to roster her at this particular price. However, even if she's cage controlling, clinching, that still counts as control time. She also is able to land a lot of non-significant strikes in her fights. For example, against Norma Dumont, she landed nearly 100 non-significant strikes, and that contributes to her ceiling as well. So, of course, I'm going to prioritize the, the better finishers in this range, the safer favorites, but... A lot of them are going to soak up ownership as well. And so if you're looking for a pivot in the 9K range, a semi-contrarian option, which is what this analysis is meant to be for, Chasson at 9K does fit that bill. She has grappling upside. Um, she's already submitted Kianzad once. And Kianzad, even still, even in her last fight against... Sorry, let me pull it up. Kianzad in her last fight against Ketlin Vieira gave up three takedowns and... 11 minutes of control. So it's not like as Kianzad's developing in her career, she's getting so much better as a defensive grappler. She's still showing weaknesses. I, I'm i not betting Chasson on the money line, but if Chasson wins, I think she can potentially put up a score competitive with the optimal lineup and be lower owned publicly as well. 
All right, next up, my salary play of the week. I'm going to go with Chelsea Chandler here at 7.8K in a fight that I really do like with her and Josiane Nunez. Chandler, it's funny because I was on Chandler in her UFC debut, um, and then I was off of her in her next fight against Norma Dumont because of the weaknesses that I saw from her in her UFC debut, and she did not perform well, lost a decision, and I think I still have major concerns here. Chelsea Chandler does not have much defense of any kind. She doesn't defend takedowns very well. She doesn't defend strikes well at all. She even, in her last fight against Norma Dumont, turned her back to Dumont and was running away. And that's now like a meme that that everyone posts on the internet of her turning her back to her opponent. So just on defending takedown, or sorry, Chandler, 33% takedown defense officially, 42% striking defense. She's not good. She's not a good defensive fighter, and that's going to get her in trouble continually. And Josian Nunez is going to go out there and throw hammers. And if Nunez cracks Chandler and hurts her, that won't be a surprise at all. However, Nunez is five foot two and just way outsized in this division. Chandler's five foot eight. She's going to tower over Nunez. And while Nunez does throw hammers, that's kind of the, the one good thing about her. She's not very defensively sound either. She just absorbed a ton of strikes by Zara Farron. And prior to that, she's given up three takedowns to Ramona Pasquale, who's not a UFC level opponent. So the reason I like Chandler at 7.8K, A, maybe the public is not on her as much in this fight because she's coming off a loss. She doesn't project extremely well, plus 300 to win inside the distance. And she's, she's just not that great. But B, she her style is still built to score very well when she wins. And in her UFC debut, when she won, she scored 111 DraftKings points. If she beats Josie and Nunez, I think it comes from takedowns to a degree, ground and pound. It could come inside the distance. And at 7.8K, I think she has plenty of upside to compete with the optimal lineup there. So um, I like this fight as a whole. I will be targeting both sides, but Chandler is my preferred option, especially given her wrestling upside and general size advantage over Nunes this weekend. All right, let's move on to my matchup of the week. It's going to be too eva. No, I'm just kidding. I won't give you the main event. That would be a little too easy. Let's roll with uh, Ode Osborne versus Jafel Filio. Filio is minus... Where is he? Minus 162. Uh, Osborne plus 140 on DraftKings Filio, 8.7K. Osborne 7.5K. I like this fight because A is projected to end inside the distance. Uh, the under on two and a half rounds is minus 185. And it could play out in a bi binary fashion with Osborne being the superior striker, having early knockout upside, and... Filio being the superior grappler, having submission upside. Filio in his last fight, although he won, he was hurt pretty badly early on, and Osborne is the type to potentially duplicate that and just knock him out. Um, I definitely have concerns with Filio at this point in striking exchanges, but conversely, Osborne's been knocked down the first round multiple times. He's been submitted in the first round multiple times, or early in the fight multiple times in his UFC career. Filio is a far superior submission grappler, and if Filio gets the fight on the ground, I think he will finish this fight, uh, put up a decent score, and potentially contend with the optimal at seven point at eight point seven k. Uh, Filio is minus one twenty to win inside the distance. Osborne plus three hundred. Maybe we'll see some love on both sides, but I'm not expecting either to be super jockey. And yeah, I like this matchup because the it may not play out competitively. Um, which is the goal one side could dominate, whether it be on the feet or on the ground, and the winner, because of it, inside the distance, will put up a strong score um, and put themselves on the optimal. So Filio versus Osborne is a potentially sneaky but very strong fight to target on DraftKings this weekend. All right, guys, that's it for this week's UFC Quick Picks. Thank you so much for the support. You can follow me on Twitter, Brett Apley, double T, double P. Uh, establish the run is now the new home for our MMA premium content. I just spent an hour and a half breaking down every single fight on the slate with my friend, uh, and co-host, Mr. John Kelly this week. So I highly encourage you to check that out. If you want more content, uh, best of luck in your contest this week, take care and we'll talk to y'all soon.
Peace.